In today's video, we're discussing responsive design. Responsive design ensures your web page looks good on both large and small screens. Without it, your layout can get messy when you shrink the window. Responsive design helps you adjust your structure for smaller devices known as breakpoints. Now, let's explore responsive design in action. As you can see, my web page looks fine on larger screen, but it gets messy when I shrink the window. To fix this, I'll need to make my design responsive. First, I need to open this drop down menu. And here, I can choose between 1920 pixels for desktop, 991 pixels for tablets, 767 pixels for mobile landscapes, or 480 pixels for mobile phones. Let's begin with 991 pixels. This means I make changes for screens 991 pixels wide and below. Firstly, I'll hide this image because it's overlapping with my content. I'll simply select it and set it to display none, and this image disappears. You might wonder what happens on wider screens like PCs or laptops. Well, nothing changes there because responsive design works like this. When you make style edits in one breakpoint, those changes apply to smaller breakpoints. For instance, if I edit something in desktop breakpoint, those changes will also apply to all smaller breakpoints. If I make edits in the 1280 breakpoint, they only affect screens narrower than 1280. Before we dive into more property edits, let's discuss the space around the edges in each section. This space is a result of the container being present in every section. It's a good example of why you should add left and right padding to your container. It keeps your content from sticking too closely to the window's edges. If I remove this spacing globally for every container, you'll notice how my content now aligns with the window. This is another useful aspect of the container. If you'd like to learn more about the container tag, we have a dedicated tutorial for that. After we said that, let's continue editing our section. Firstly, let's reduce this top and bottom space a bit. I will select this section and make this padding a bit smaller. As I go and hover over this property here, you can notice this small pop-up that tells me from which breakpoint is this property inherited. Now, after reducing the spacing, let's make this whole content go in full width. Grid property is not needed here anymore, so I can just go and set this to be block. After that, I still have max width here, which I can set to 100%. And now, this content is stretching in full width. After completing the first section, let's move on to edit the remaining sections. First, we have this grid here, which we can set to two columns and add some gap. Below that, I'll make this bottom space a little bit smaller. After this, we encounter an H2. When editing text tags in responsiveness, it's efficient to make global changes, which apply to all H2 tags in this breakpoint. Next, there are these fields set in a grid. As before, we can reduce the number of columns to adjust them. Then, we came across another H2, which is larger because it's edited separately with specific font size properties on a desktop. And this is a good example how to edit separately tags which have global properties as our H2. You just need to select it and directly on a tag add wishing properties. The next section on the list contains flex property, which I can set to a column direction. Then I can add some gap here and after that I will remove the max width property of these items so they can fully stretch. Right after that, I can scroll down a bit and make this bottom space a little bit smaller. With the theme cards, I can simply reduce the columns in my grid and the grid system takes care of the rest. And I will as well add some row gap so these cards don't get stick to each other. Finally, in the last section, we'll place the content in a single row and add some spacing. I will as well reduce the top and bottom spacing of this section. With this, our tablet breakpoint is finished. Now, let's move on to the next breakpoint, which is 667 pixels, often referred to as mobile landscape. Since it's not significantly smaller than the tablet structure, everything here looks fine, and 
I won't make any changes. Now, let's move our attention to a vital breakpoint on our list, which is 480 pixels, commonly referred to as the mobile. Many people use mobile phones to access websites, so it's important to make your website work well on these devices. Let's start by making our H1 here smaller. As mentioned earlier, it's a good practice to edit text tags globally. So, we'll adjust the global font size until it fits nicely in my section. Next, I'll place these two buttons in one column. Since we're using the flex property here, I'll set the direction to column, add some space between them, and align them to the left. I can as well reduce the bottom space of this section to be equal to the top space. And with that, our hero section is completed. We can move on to this statistics section. Because it's grid, we can just reduce the number of columns and this section already looks better. All that is left here is just to increase this gap a little bit. With that completed, let's move on to the next section. These cards here appear a little bit squeezed. So let's adjust this grid to provide them with more space. Now these cards have more room to stretch. In this section here, I'll decrease the top and bottom space and I'll also reduce the font size of this H2 until the text fits in two rows. After these adjustments, this section appeared too small, so let's increase the top and bottom padding a little bit. This already looks better. This section here looks pretty fine. All I can do here is just reduce the top spacing and it's all done. In this section, I can also reduce the top spacing. These cards here would look better if they were in one row. Since they are set in a grid, I can easily make that change. And now, my cards have more space. Here, I can go and reduce this bottom space as well, and I can move on to the next section. When it comes to this form, let's set every field to be in a separate row. I just need to change the flex property to go in a column direction, add some gaps so my input fields don't get stuck to each other, and it's all done. The final touch in this section will be to reduce the top and bottom space, and that's it. And with that, my responsive design for mobile phones is complete. Now, when I go to the live site, you can see that everything looks fine on desktop because lower breakpoint edits don't affect wider breakpoints. When I start shrinking this window, you can notice that when I reach a certain width of the window, my styles change. And now everything is well organized even on smaller devices. But when I go back to the hero section and make this window a bit wider, you can see that at certain breakpoint this image is still overlapping with this text. However, in the responsive menu we don't have a breakpoint that can target this window width. If we go back to the builder and open the drop down again, at the bottom you may notice add breakpoint option. This option gives me the ability to manually create breakpoints so I can more precisely edit my content. I will create a breakpoint at a 1440 pixels window width and after that in a drop down menu you can notice new breakpoint. I'll make this image smaller on this breakpoint. I can just adjust its max width until it fits nicely with this content. Now. If I go back to the live site and again reduce the width of the window, you can see that this image is not overlapping with the text anymore. Instead, on this breakpoint it gets smaller. But if I go and reduce this window width a bit more, you can again see that this image is overlapping with my content. So for that, I can again go back to the builder and add another custom breakpoint. And for this example, I'll make a new breakpoint at 1280 pixels. If you made a mistake with the numbers when creating your breakpoint, you can simply right click on this breakpoint and edit its width or completely remove it. After customizing my breakpoint, I can now select it and make this image even smaller on this breakpoint. Now, as I go back to the live site and start resizing the window, you'll notice that my image gets smaller when it hits my custom breakpoints. After making my structure fully responsive, let's see what you shouldn't do when working with responsive design. If I go to a lower breakpoint and, for example, delete this button here, this change will have an impact on every breakpoint, even on the wider ones, because I made changes directly in the HTML. The same goes for adding tags in my project. 
if I add this paragraph on this breakpoint and go to some wider breakpoints, that paragraph will be added everywhere. And if I go and try to edit the content of this paragraph on some smaller breakpoints, that text will be changed everywhere. That's because, once again, I made changes directly in HTML. If you want to show or hide elements on different breakpoints, there is a solution for that. For example, if you want to hide this button on a certain breakpoint, you can select the breakpoint and set the display property to none for this button. Now, it will only be visible on desktop. But what if you want something to be visible only on smaller devices? Well, it's simple. Let's add a paragraph here, change its text, and set it to display none on desktop. Now, I can go back to my tablet breakpoint and set its display to block. With this, I've achieved that my paragraph is only visible on tablets and smaller devices. Now, when we talked about changing text content on different breakpoints, let's see what will happen if I change this image on a lower breakpoint. Exactly the same thing happens with images as well. That's because when I change an image, I make changes directly into HTML, and it will change everywhere. To summarize responsive design, when you edit something in larger breakpoints, that styling will also be applied to smaller breakpoints. If you add, remove or change content like images or texts, those changes will affect all breakpoints. Responsive design primarily functions through CSS. Modifications in HTML or JavaScript like adding, removing or modifying tags, content, classes or attributes do not affect responsive design. Essentially, responsive design relies on CSS and remains unaffected by HTML or JavaScript. That's the end of this video. I hope you now have a clear understanding of how responsive design functions and that this tutorial will assist you in creating great websites that work well on all devices. Until the next time, happy building!